by year six. It's Tuesday the 2nd of March and this is your English lesson. We're still thinking about our World Book Day book, The Unforgotten Cape. I read chapter one yesterday. Hopefully you either read it yourself or you listened to it, either me reading it or you can get Frank Trial Boyce. I've put the link in the description under the video. You can listen to him reading it. So we're going to go on to chapter two. I'm not going to read all of chapter two, but I'm just going to read some of chapter two for you. Okay, here is the Eagle Hood coat. That's not Nergu's coat in the picture. That's Chingus's coat. I saw that coat today for the first time since we all left. I'd heard that they were going to knock the school down this summer. As it was the last day of term and my last chance to take a look, I went over on my way back from work. Mrs Spenlove is still working there incredibly and she recognised me right away. 34 years she's taught there. Imagine that. She let me go around with her while she collected her stuff and some souvenirs. The old store cupboards, the cloakroom, her classroom. And there at the back of our old classroom was a big blue plastic tub with lost property written in it. Mostly trainers and socks and a few books, a lockable Miffy diary, a couple of in the night garden lunch boxes and the coat. The unforgettable coat of Chingus Tool. I lifted it out and I held it out at arm's length. I wish I could say it looked like a bird, but it was more like a big hairy bat, just hanging there. I went through the pockets the way that you do, and that's how I found these pictures. So you can look at these yourself in the book if they're not very clear for you, because you've all got a copy of the book. This one's the most intriguing. Demon, eat this. I really did take my good guy duties seriously. I took Chingis and Nergu to the dining hall every lunchtime and I made sure that they could sit together, even though I didn't have dinners myself. I made sure that they knew what they had to bring for games and for swimming. I told them to lose their weird looking coats and wear something normal. And when it was our class assembly, I lobbied for it to be all about Mongolia, thinking that Chingis would join in and maybe even be pleased. But it didn't work out that way. I brought in pictures and I looked up stuff on Wikipedia for the first time in my life. He did nothing. Even on the day, he just stood there, looking Mongolian, while I told the school all that I had learnt about how Mongolia is a landlocked presidential republic in Central Asia. It's the most sparsely populated country in the world, where a lot of people were still nomads, who lived in big tents called yurts, and the men liked to hunt wolves with eagles, and how there was a city there called Xanadu, which was the fifth great Khan's summer capital. It had fountains and brooks and meadows and woods that were full of every kind of wild beast. And the Khan went hunting with his eagles there. The palace itself was made of tightly woven bamboo, so that it could be taken apart and moved. Inside it was all painted with birds and animals and trees so that you couldn't really tell whether you were inside or out. When someone said, is it really like that where you come from? Chingus said, yes, nothing has changed. What did you come to Bootle for then? When everyone sniggered, he just shrugged his shoulders. We are nomads, we move around. I didn't do all of this out of the goodness of my heart. It was part of my plan. I wanted to be asked back to their house. I imagined it'd be stuffed with silks, with a horse head fiddle in one corner, a samovar bobbling in the other. I really had done my homework. Thanks to my obsession with Mimi's makeup, I already knew a bit about getting yourself asked back to places. All you had to do was walk with someone until they were nearly home and then say, oh, is that where you live? And if that wasn't enough, just say you needed the toilet. Once you got through the door, their mother usually asked you to stay. This didn't work with Chingus and Nergu though, for the simple reason that they seemed to take a different route home every day. One day they'd head left at Hawthorne Road, the next day I'd go that way and I'd wait for them to catch up. I'd wait for ages to just discover that they'd gone off down the avenue. So the next day I'd go that way, only to see them turn around and walk back the way that they had come, heading straight past me. Sometimes they'd disappear into the terraces. Sometimes they'd even slide off into back alleys. I gave up trying to follow them, but whenever, but whatever I was, whenever I was out, I would look at the windows of houses and flats, wondering if one of them was theirs, and feeling certain that somewhere in the narrow streets or tower blocks, 
There was a room with the silks and the samovar, like a secret gateway. Somewhere in Bootle, Xanadu was buried like treasure. Now I'm going to stop there. There's plenty more of chapter two, and I want you to read all of chapter two, please. And then your task for today is to research Mongolia. So, really interesting country. You see, this is where these boys are from. And like we said, it's a nomadic culture where they live off the land and they move around. It's a very traditional culture there. So this is one of the websites. I'll put lots of websites in the description. Thank you, Mrs. Stubbs. If you could move over to show us the website. So this is, this is a great website for learning about different countries. It's called National Geographic Kids. I will put the links in the description under the video. And this tells you all about Mongolia. And it shows you some people wearing Mongolian national dress, this is one of the tents, the yurts, that some of the nomadic Mongolian people live in. And this shows you on the map, it's landlocked. So it has no coastline. So it's a really interesting country. Mongolia is located in Asia, between Russia to the north and China to the south. There's some fast facts there. That's the geography, it's got interesting geography. Oh, and there's the pictures, big for us to have a look at. I told you about the people and the culture. I'd like you to research it. Okay, that shows you their flag, their money, tells you about their government, their history. Very, very interesting. I'd like you to use a few different websites and I'd like you to do a mind map showing me everything that you can find out about Mongolia. Okay, because that is where these two characters come from. Very, very different to the big city of Liverpool that they end up in as immigrants. Okay, so good luck, year six.